Father in heaven, we bring every member of the family before your throne this evening. We bring the children. We bring sons. We bring daughters. We bring fathers, mothers. We bring siblings, uncles, and aunties. We bring grandparents. There is chaos in the land. There is a destitute of quality knowledge concerning the subject of marriage, family, and relationship. Satan is masquerading, misleading many young people, including the old, in this needful area of life. Today, in the name of Jesus, any family under the spell of the enemy, under the attack of the kingdoms of darkness, we pray in the name of Jesus, any family in bondage, we pray that the Bible says, where the sun set free, there is freedom indeed. From the south to the west, from the north to the east, let there be complete liberation of the family. Anybody in any relationship that is destined for doom will destroy, will derail, will affect, will vanquish their hope in God. We pray today in the powerful name of Jesus, let such relationship be broken. Take control over the airwaves. We pray for internet stability. We pray for those here in person. We pray for those watching across the world. We pray through the power of the risen Christ. Let your word come today with clarity. Let it come with power. Let it come with authority. Not I, but Christ. Be honored, loved, and exalted. Not I. But Christ, be seen, be known, and be heard. Not I, but Christ. In every look and action, not I, but Christ. In every thought and word, in Jesus' name, amen. Please kindly be seated. For the sake of time, our subject this evening, unfamiliar, family frenemy, subheading, let's go to war. Unfamiliar, family, frenemy, subheading, let's go to war. As I always do, it was Jesus himself who said, if you continue in my words, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. If the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. Can some Kenyans and Africans in here say a hearty amen? That looks like it's in the colden part of Africa. Can somebody say a hearty amen out there? Amen. I made to you four promises. Promise number one is the Bible is going to be the bedrock of our study. The reason is the Bible means what it says and says just what it means. Promise number two, you are going to be enlightened irrespective of who you are. Promise number three, you are going to be challenged to make the most important decision of your life. And promise number four, our lives, your life and mine will never be the same. Our theme for this month, hope for families, subheading, build, establish and flourish but for today unfamiliar family friend and me subheading let's go to war day one two subjects were treated familiar family failures subheading it's about us in the evening familiar family frailties subheading let's be real day number two unfamiliar family follies subheading let's rethink Day number three, yesterday, unfamiliar, family frustrations, it's subheading, let's be attentive. And tonight is unfamiliar, family frenemy, subheading, let's go to war. Frenemy is an in, informal word, which means a person who is or pretends to be a friend, but who is also in some ways an enemy. Or a rival, frenemy, frenemy. 
The plural will be frenemies. A person who is or pretends to be a friend, but who is also in some ways an enemy, not just an enemy, a rival. This evening, our subject is to unveil who is rivaling the family, who is your family's enemy. Sometimes, Satan is overblamed. Today, through the authority of God's word, we will unmask the family's frenemy. And we are not just going to unmask it, we will go to war. Subheading is going to be bloody tonight. The family cannot continue to be an assault center for the enemy. And all we do is we play about it, we laugh about it, and nothing gets done. If I were to have time, I would have asked you, name your top five common family enemies of your relationship. Not frenemies, enemies. But I don't have the time. My subject today is about ignorance, to put it bluntly. The most dangerous enemy of your family is ignorance. This is the end of the message. With this, we can pray and go home. Ignorance is the greatest, the most dangerous, the most deadly, vicious enemy of the family. Sadly, ignorance is treated as if, oh, I don't know, then we smile. Oh, it's new to me. No, we don't smile. This evening we are going on a bloody, bloody journey with ignorance. Let me make the point. The three most important variables that builds family is not love, it's not sex, it's not communication, it's not money. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says through wisdom a house is built. By understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious, meaning rare and common, pleasant riches. Whenever there is knowledge in any family, the blessings, the Bible says, they are not common. They are uncommon. Question, why is your family not experiencing uncommon blessings and common, and common riches, and common pleasant goodies. Why? Ignorance. Let me give you the better, a, better, a better framework. A better framework. How many times did Jesus cry in the whole of the Bible? Who knows? You tell me, I give you a gift. I said a gift. Somebody said, huh? I said, I give you a gift. How many times? Those googling, you can Google now. Three times. The first time we are told Jesus wept, John 11, verse 35, at the tomb of Lazarus, he looked at the way Martha and Mary, they were crying, and the way they were lamenting, the Bible says he lifted up his voice, and Jesus wept. Then the Jews were gossiping. They said, oh, he loves him so much. But this is the same person who healed the blind. Why could he not cause him not to die? And Jesus went ahead and healed Lazarus. The first time Jesus wept was due to the ramification, the outcome, the consequences of sin. Sin brought death. So when Jesus saw the way sin has dealt with Lazarus, he lifted up his voice and cried. The second point, I'm jumping, the second one I would not use, I will use as a third one. The next time we heard Jesus cry was a narrative in the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 7. While Jesus was here on earth, he offered prayers and pleadings with a loud cry and tears to the one who could rescue him from death. Death was the reason why Jesus cried. The second reason Jesus cried was death. The third reason Jesus cried is the focus of our subject. And he drew near. He saw the city and wept over it. Why did Jesus cry? Verse 42 of Luke 19. If, if this day, if this day, if this day, you only know 
or knew what makes for peace, but now is hidden from your side. For the days are coming upon you when your enemies will raise a palisade against you. They will encircle you and, uh, and hem you in all of your sides. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason Jesus cried, arguably, aside death, in the first two instances, the second time Jesus cried was because of ignorance. Note it down for the rest of your life. What will make our loving law look at a people in ignorance and he lifted up his voice. He saw a whole city of ignorant people and he wept. Symbolically, I want to say this evening, Jesus is looking at many ignorant families using the wrong method, the wrong approach, the wrong appeal, and Jesus is crying. Why? He's crying because of ignorance. Ladies and gentlemen, ignorant is dangerous and it is deadly. Look at the picture on the screen. Ignorant is dangerous and it is deadly. Do you know the reason why? Even God is unable to help the ignorant. There is nothing God can do if you are ignorant. I'm going to prove it to you from the Bible. The reason why some families cannot be helped, some individuals cannot be helped, and those of you watching us, the reason why some of you this week, you need to give your life to Jesus, and you need to stop the life of ignorant living, living around the ashes of sin, living around the ashes of foolishness, living around the ashes of pelvic activities. The reason is the ignorant person cannot even be helped by a loving God. If you are not ignorant, it means you're knowledgeable. Remember, our subject today, unfamiliar, family, friend, and me. I didn't use plural. I use singular. Friend, and me. Let's go to war. In the Old Testament, when you look for the word, the word knowledge, it carries a lot of weight. Today, I'm not going to spend more time. I will break it down for you, then we go. Number one, Genesis chapter 2, verse 9. He says, uh, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And out of the ground, the Lord God made every tree that is pleasant to the eyes, uh, pleasant to the side, good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden. And the tree of knowledge, take note of that word, knowledge. Whenever the Bible used the word knowledge in the Old Testament, it's talking about experiential, relational, acquisition of skills and capacity and ability to fulfill a certain agenda or end goal. Follow me carefully. Proverbs 1, verse 29 to verse 31. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they will have none of my counsel and despise my every rebuke. Therefore, they shall eat the fruits of their own way and be filled to the full with their own fancies. God used the word again, knowledge. Because they hated my technical skills, my experience, they hated my relationship they will pay for it knowledge daniel chapter 12 daniel 12 verse 4 but you daniel roll up and seal the words of the scroll until the time of the end many will go here and there to increase knowledge knowledge shall abound men shall run to and fro. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a paradox that we are in the end of time. The Bible says, shut up the words of the scroll until the time of the end. We are in the time of the end, a time where we are to be filled with knowledge, a time where ignorance is to be dispelled. Sadly, we are in a season of complete ignorance. 
knowledge. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 10. Give me wisdom and knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, not to deliver the point. In the Old Testament, whenever you talk about knowledge, is a truth, an understanding. Knowledge is a revelation or notion that is based on intimate relationship or experience. Take notes. In the Old Testament, whenever you talk about knowledge, you are talking about a truth. You are talking about an understanding or a revelation that is based not on shallow experience, intimate relationship. And Adam knew the wife. Knowledge. There is a slight difference. In fact, if you want to put it in perspective, another form of it is knowledge is a unique skill, a unique experience, a certain ability, a learning, a certain cleverness or prudence. Knowledge, the Old Testament sums it up. In the New Testament, knowledge can either be gnosis, on which we have diagnostics. It has a varied interpretation. It may mean not necessarily an intimate relationship, but a cognitive experience, i.e., Luke 11, verse 52, Woe to you expect in the law, because you have taken away the key to knowledge. In that text in Luke, the meaning of knowledge is insight. Insight into a revealed truth. Knowledge. Follow me very carefully. Another word for knowledge in in the New Testament may mean epignosis, which may state in Romans 1. It says, furthermore, just as they did not think of it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God. That word used there means the precise, the correct insight or revelation of God. So knowledge, it may mean either insight into a revealed truth or it may mean a coincide a precise insight or revelation into a concept knowledge matthew 13 verse 11 he replied because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you but not to them the word they use for knowledge is what is called ginosko, which means in this instance, when the Bible says, because the knowledge, it means the capacity to know, the ability to come to terms with knowledge. Putting it bluntly, the last one, let me pull the pieces together. You may never know who is listening. Another version of knowledge is Snoida. In Acts chapter 5 verse 2, the Bible says, with his wife, with his wife's full knowledge, talking about Ananias and Sapphira, the Bible says, with his wife's full knowledge, in other words, with his wife's full awareness. So knowledge may also mean awareness. What am I saying? In the New Testament, when we say knowledge, it's uncommon revelation. Number two, when we say knowledge, is to become personally aware. Not, they say, personally aware. You are an eyewitness in the case of Ananias and Sapphira. When they say knowledge, is to study, to comprehend, or relate to comprehend. So, knowledge may mean studying, studiousness, to come to a conclusion. Or, based on relationship. You come to a conclusion. Knowledge. Through wisdom, a house is built. By understanding, it is established by knowledge, by study, by intimacy, by experience. By awareness, by special skills, the rooms of the families will be filled with uncommon. Whenever you see the word precious, some versions will say uncommon. 
the Hebrew right, right word is rare riches. It's an uncommon riches. In other words, a family can be built, a family can be established, but it's not productive. This evening, the secret to the message is how can your families begin to be productive? And the productivity is uncommon. You need knowledge. Allow me. Allow me. Say it this way. Read this text with me, Nairobi Central. Let's read it together. Hosea 4, or Hosea 4, 6. It says what? My people are destroyed for lack of all knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Question. My people are destroyed because of the devil. True or false? My people are destroyed because of demons. True or false? My people are destroyed because of satanic manipulations. True or false? My people are destroyed because of what? Another word for lack of knowledge is what? Ignorance. Watch the test carefully. Ignorance is a choice. You cannot reject what was not into existence. Look at the text. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou has rejected what? Knowledge. In other words, knowledge was not a scarcity. It was available. But there was a deliberation, an intentionality, not to pursue the path of knowledge. I repeat, ignorance is a choice. The ignorant, the state of your home, your relationship, is occasion. But a deliberate choice not to know. How can an educated, full grown elder, a full grown woman who gave birth to children, say, I don't know? God says, Listen to me, I'm going to reject you. I dare say today, many homes are rejected on account of ignorance. It's a choice. What's your wife's temperament? I don't know. You are foolish. There is no better way to say it. Take a man's What is Samuel's temperament? I don't know. He is foolish. It's a choice. Follow me. Ignorant. It's not just generational. It is transgenerational. Look at the text very carefully. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being priests for me. God says, you can't represent me on account of ignorance. Because you have forgotten the law of the Lord, I will also forget your children. Listen, ignorance is not just generational. It is counter, transgenerational. How do I know an ignorant mother gave birth to ignorant baby who were read ignorantly, who are ignorantly living lives and they think they have arrived and they are a mess to the society. God foresaw what was going to happen to the antediluvians? So he destroyed all of them, including their babies. They were born out of ignorance. So he killed them. Your ignorance will affect your children and your children's children. Let me say it differently. If God has rejected you, chances are that he has rejected your children. How did you bring them up? Innocent children. Ignorant mothers. Ignorant fathers making babies all over the world and the world is filled with a lot of ignorant children who are also giving birth to ignorant children marrying ignorantly and ignorance has populated the world. And God is looking for tools and men to use. He can't find them. Why? Your children are good in mathematics but they are stupid. You were stupid giving birth to them. 
and we come to church, we dress, and we think we have arrived. We know who, especially the men, we won't invest to know. And we are so arrogant with some dirty egos, ignorant, empty, hollow egos. Can I ask you a question? On what basis did you marry? Yesterday was what? Under what? Stand. Shaky foundation. Allow me. Watch that. What is that? Come again. A satellite in space. Hear me. Your smartphone is millions of times more powerful than all of NASA's combined computing in 1969 that placed a man on the moon. Yet you are ignorant. This. More powerful than what took a man to the moon. Yet still, this powerful computing is in our hands. Yet, we are in a well of a lot of ignorant people. And not just ignorant, we are so arrogant about it. Here is the tragedy, as I put it. I repeat, ignorant parents with the best computing they can ever get, giving birth to dysfunctional and stupidly ignorant children. We have become a generation destroyed because of lack of knowledge in an age of information technology technology yet we are completely ignorant my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge churches are destroyed for lack of companies collapse for lack of Families collapse for lack of. You ask a man, how much do you know about the framework, the mandate, the responsibility of a man? And he's ignorant. Yet he's a father of three with pot belly. He's moving. You see a young woman, we can spend four hours to fix our hair, yet the content in the head is ignorant. Listen, ignorant is not a friend. My tone has changed today. It's an enemy. Ignorant is dangerous. It's dangerous. Leave the devil out. It's ignorance. We go to some churches. I won't mention their names. They cast out the devil, including they urinate and brush the teeth of the devil. They stamp on the devil. What they need to be stamping on is ignorance. Why is ignorance dangerous? Hear me out. Read me. Satan leverages ignorance. As a strategic tormenting tool. You see families struggling to live right. Ignorant. Let me give you an example. A church member came to me and said, Pastor, six children. I'm not stopping. Until God give me a son. Six. What job are you doing? How much does he earn? One eighty dollars. Six children. And guess what? He has gone to abuse the wife. Abuse the wife. Abuse the wife. Abuse the wife. That give me a son, or I divorce you. Is it a man, a woman that gives that determine the sex of children? Who determines that? 
So what is the problem in that home? I didn't know. Is it the devil? Is it Satan? Do they need prayer? The man needs enlightenment. He's in darkness. Tell somebody, throw light in the room. So you don't get it. I'm saying, tell somebody, throw light into the room. Come on. I'm commanding as the preacher now. I say, say, throw light into the room. Throw light into the room. <laughs> in era far before or after the season we call renaissance, a man is about to divorce the wife. She's not giving me a son. I will divorce. And he kept giving birth. From one till the six, he went for a side chick. Give birth to three. Girls. I told him, leave her too. Go for the third wife. And give birth to another seven. So that you represent the Ghana black star. God, give me the right word. Let me say this way. Do you know why I make this statement? There must be a deliberate war against ignorance. Do you know the reason why? I gave you a reason. Satan will leverage the ignorant. And he will torment the families. Torment the families. Torment the families. Listen, tomorrow I'm going to speak. Let me, let me declare it. If you are not married, all the young men and women in Nairobi Central, tomorrow you are not going to be on virtual space. I need you in this place. Somebody say an amen. Please, I, it's, it's an appeal. All the young men and women in Nairobi Central, if you are not married, or the widowed, or the widowers, anybody who is not married in this church, as much as is dependent on you, please, I want you in person. Tomorrow we are taking it to the next level. One of the reasons why there is a crisis in the home, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't start when we are married. It all begins, the whole framework of the marriage concept is misunderstood. It's based on ignorance. Before I got married, I read 15 books about marriage. When Samuela, she's listening, when she was in Sierra Leone, I was in Ghana. We used to talk sun, sun, Sundays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Once a week, there were no smartphones. At that time, she would do a summary of a chapter and we discuss. I don't want to marry on ignorance. If marriage is what it ought to be, if marriage is indeed coming from the hands of God, somebody should know how to get it right. What is this thing that is threatening everybody? Listen, relationship is everything in the work or at the workplace relationship. Home relationship. On the streets. Ladies and gentlemen, there must be a solution to this whole business of marriage. There is an urgent need of deep knowledge in strategic spheres of life. Hear me. We are not investing in investigating or finding out. We are not. The reason why I'm saying this is God cannot help beyond the knowledge of the truth you know. Let me say it differently. It's not enough to know some things. Those who fail exams, it's not because they don't know anything. True or false? I don't get it. Maybe it's too deep. Let me break it down. The pass mark is 50. When you get 48, have you failed or have you passed? Failed or passed? I didn't hear it. Failed or passed? The person who gets 48, does he know some things? The problem is not, I'm not saying we don't know anything. We know some things. 
But what we know is at the minimum threshold, it cannot carry you far. Let me say it again. You need 10 facts about marriage. I'm making an assumption to succeed in marriage. If you know two, will your marriage succeed? Tell me, will your marriage succeed? The issue about ignorance is not, not knowing anything at all. We all know something. But what we know is so low is so minimal that it cannot take us far. Allow me to say it differently. God cannot help us beyond the knowledge of the truth we know. This is the reason why I'm saying that. He says, and you shall war, know the truth. And the truth does war, shall set you free. Question, what is our responsibility? Talk to me, what is our responsibility? What is God's responsibility? To set us free. God cannot study for you. Elder, read. Read. Young man, read. Put the head on fire. Read. Acquire knowledge. Look, the one who founded Dell at 19 years, he discovered Dell. At 40, he retired. At 19, an African-year-old boy is thinking about sex. Foolishness to the highest order. Foolishness to the highest order. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in this deep hole for lack of knowledge. Ah! You must know the truth. It is knowledge that sets people free. Reason, if there is a family that is in bondage, they are always fighting. They are always fighting. They are always fighting. They cannot stay. They cannot stay. It's not working. It's not working. What is the problem? They lack what? Knowledge. Without knowledge, you can't understand. Without knowledge and understanding, you have no wisdom. For you to have wisdom is the application of knowledge. And what? Understanding. But God started with what? Wisdom. Then he came to what? Understanding. Now he's coming to what? Knowledge. How much do you know about the woman and the body? Some of us, our marriages collapsing. We don't even know how to have sex. I repeat, we don't know how to have sex. For the fact that you have three kids, four kids. There must be knowledge in that thing. You don't know how to deal with a teenage girl. That is a phlegmatic. That has low self-esteem. That a young boy in school is always affirming her. And her whole body is so sweet. And do you know what you are doing? I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot help. Yes, prayer is there. But you need what? Knowledge. When your son starts smoking, you don't know until he's grown. Do you know the reason why? You lack the capacity to discern that he has changed. No, he has started smoking long ago. Madam, you were telling us last Saturday. See, the person said, no, it's bad company. No, he asked the boy, since when did you start? He said, what, secondary school. Do you know what was the problem? The father was absent. The mother was absent. Not that they are not present. They lack knowledge to identify. I.e., if it starts raining now, will we know it is raining? Yes or no? Yes. It's based on what? Knowledge. Stop explaining the failure. Please. Please. Stop explaining the failure. The problem is not explaining what is happening. The problem is seeking for the insight, the awareness that can take your family from that quagmire. 
young ladies who are not yet married, young men that are not yet married, please, there is a certain threshold you need to get to before you get married. I can guarantee you, you are not there, you will suffer. Listen, it's not a curse. It's a fact of life. Will a 10-year-old girl suffer when giving birth when she's pregnant? Yes or no? Yes. It's a fact of life. Minimum knowledge in this department. Listen, marriage takes 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, 80 years, 70 years, 40 years of being together. But when it is time to go that journey, we trivialize it. And guess the people we leave it to? We leave it to social media. My daughter was seven. Everything about sex to her level, it was done. By nine, she knows what it is for a man who is a good man, a bad man. I won't waste. You dare not. I will not wait. Let me play my part. Let the heavens justify me that I did my part. Learn. Learn. You are married to a woman with a low self-esteem. You are choleric. How do you handle her so that there will be peace in the home? You need to learn. What is your wife's love language? Some of you, your wife, Gary Chapman, simple books. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give 16. I will say it Friday. Pastor, allow me. I'm tempted. The temptation is coming. God, save me. Save me this night. Amen. Man. We have been deceived. Sometimes, when I say prayer ministers have been abused, please, I pray. I pray every day. I believe in prayer. Look at me. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a non-prayer person. But we use prayer to hide our failure of ignorance. After you finish praying, go to the library, buy a book. Sometimes we buy the book, we don't even listen. YouTube is free. Many content, millions of content. The question is this. What do you use the, your data for? What do you use your time for? Sabbath, they say 24 hours. God says it's for me. If for nothing, spend time Saturday. Read, study. Sit your wife down. Take her on a small evening just, just, just take, a, take, a, take, just take a walk and just ask her. Sometimes she's back. You are back and, and then she, the whole place is in trouble. Immediately I get back and I didn't hear, hey honey, how are you? Maybe Susan has done something. The mother is all angry. Good evening everybody. The response is, good evening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Susan, how are you? Okay. Sammy, is everything okay? I'm fine. Okay. Based on knowledge, all my stress that day, I must hide it. Because if I change the gear, the house will be on fire. The meaning is, that is not her true self. So something has gone wrong. When I investigated, do you know what happened? The whole soup she was cooking, she went to multitask. This your choleric daughter has gone to check what is there and pour the whole soup down. The mother wants to beat and kill her. So now you are back. She's looking for somebody bent on. So what you need to do is to open a trash can for her to vent in. Vent in. Vent in. Sometimes she's just looking for somebody. You know, when the mothers are with the kids for far too long, when they speak, the kids don't listen to them again. They are so familiar with them. So they need an external for. Susan, what did you do? You engaged. Sometimes the mother will be talking to her and she's just, Mommy, no. Mommy, I say, Susan, who are you talking to? Keep quiet. Then the mother will return. That's your daughter. Oh. That is your daughter. That is your daughter. Oh. That is your daughter. Listen, 
It means she's overwhelmed. She's overwhelmed. But a foolish man like me, without knowledge, I will start. What kind of disrespect is that? Did you marry me or I married you? Am I with you or you are with me? Then the woman will change the gear. I don't want your trouble today. I am trouble? Yes. Yes, I am tired. Mm. Listen, the problem is this. The man lacked the knowledge to deal with a woman distressed and seeking for face to vent. Sometimes she's lonely, but you can't even see the sign that she's lonely. She used not to be with her phone so much, but now, her phone is a favorite friend. Some of you, the men, hear me. No, some of we, the men, hear, let's hear ourselves. Some men at the workplace, the things they are telling your wives, or our wives, when you see them, they are 6.5 feet tall. They, when they saw this captains or Kawunda is here, all the muscle are showing. They are like this. They go to gym to lift 50, 50 metals every time. They are always smelling nice when they shake your wife. When they are going to work, they have cream in the car. Before they come out, they cream their hand and spray. And when she sees your wife, she looks straight into her face and says, how are you doing? I like your dimple. Your wife refused to look up. She looks down, bam. Defense number one, broken. Then she comes home with that all playing in her mind. You can't see. She's all excited. But by the time she's gotten home, the mood is changing. And it's been two years. She's spending eight years at the workplace. And this young man is always telling, this is your wife. Things you have forgotten to tell her. The last time she heard them, when, when you were dating her. And she's melting. But when you come home, you only come to sleep and snore. No amount of prayer will save you. One day it will go down. And if it goes down one day, and they beat you to the pelvic game, you are in trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, ignorance. For the fact that she's active in church doesn't mean she's not a sinner. It's not only men who have urge to cheat. Do you know what women go through? Do you know how many times they are asking your wife out just for promotion or in change of a contract or a job? Do you know from the house to the market how many men meet her and the things they tell her? And you have retired from affirming your wife because now you have a pot belly. So you have given birth to five. So you are a retiree lover. It will go down. Allow me to say Read it with me. Let's go. Oh, come on. Talk to me in Nairobi Central. Let's go. You can never change what you accept. Question. Are there things you have already accepted? Nothing can be done. Who said so? You can never change what you accept. For my husband, this is the way he is. It's a lie. Invest a little in knowledge. Know his personality. Number two, you can never change what you do or tolerate. Write it down. 
Number three, you can never change what you refuse to war confront. Our marriage is getting to the 50th year. This doesn't apply to us. You have tolerated it. You are done. Nothing can change. That's a commercial break. Hear me. I want us to whisper prayer. How many persons in this room believe they lack knowledge. Let me see your hands. Please, hands down. Let me say it again. How many people in this room believe they lack knowledge or they are in ignorance as we speak right now? Let me see your hands. As for me, it is my two hands. Those of you joining online, how many persons online believe they lack knowledge? Just type ignorance, 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 ignorance. We want to spend five minutes to pray. I want you to get close to somebody. And I want you to lift up your voice just one minute. Pray for her. Pray for him. That dear Lord, let the thirst for knowledge, the thirst for knowledge, the thirst for knowledge, let there be, what do they call it? Let there be enmity between him, her, and ignorance. May she hate ignorance. May she love knowledge. May he hate ignorance. May he pursue knowledge. Please stand on your feet. Walk to somebody. Just walk to somebody. Just in 30 seconds. Each simple prayer, those joining online, simple prayer this evening. Wherever you are, lift up your voice and be praying. Those joining online, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lord, may I, dis, may I disconnect from ignorance, connect with knowledge. May I pursue knowledge. done you can have your seat
ladies and gentlemen. Can the organist give us one song? It is well. Just the first stanza. When peace like a river attends my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my Lord thou hast taught me to say, it is well. Just the first stanza. As our friends wrap up with their prayers. Let's hate ignorance. It's an enemy. Ignorance is worse than death. well let's sing the first stanza five just the first stanza That's when peace like a river when peace like a river come on lift up your voice and sing lift up your voice and sing. my way when sorrow like sea when sorrows like sea change what you accept you can never change what you tolerate you can never change what you refuse to confront this is the way the preacher says it or said it the hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor but through knowledge shall the just be delivered Give it a thought. There is no reason the Christian must not enjoy peace. Write this test down for the rest of your life. Let me give you the meaning. Give it a thought. The hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor. How can the righteous be delivered? Through what? Through what? The Bible is a book of opposites. So how will the, will the righteous be destroyed? It's through what? Ignorance. The meaning is, there is no vaccine for trouble. God doesn't shield the righteous from trouble. But he does deliver them out. And his method is knowledge. Let me say it again. There is no vaccine against marital unrest. God will not shield your family from disagreements, from arguing with your wife, from struggling with your adolescent children. But what God can do to deliver you, to deliver me, is through all knowledge. In other words, knowledge it's your shield and my shield. Why have we left the family so vulnerable without a shield, without a wall, without a gate, without protection? If you do not have knowledge, it's like you are in the cold and you are alone. Daniel says, Daniel 11, 
verse 32, those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know they are God, what will they do? They shall be what? Strong. And they shall carry what? They shall carry what? Great exploit. Give you the fourth. The wicked against the covenant will be destroyed by what? Flattery. Flattery. But the people who know they are God, they shall be what? Strong. And they are going to carry out and do what? Great exploits. Question. What is the basis for doing great exploits in the family? According to the text. It's based on what? Any family that is not succeeding and not doing exploit, great exploit, and it's not strong, but it's shaky. The diagnosis through the word of God this evening is simple. They lack war knowledge. Look at this man. Thomas Edison exploits. This is what knowledge will do in his field. Alexander Graham, the Graham Bell, exploits. Robert Kahn and Victor Carr, exploits. Roger and Fra, exploits the telescope. Volta, exploits. 1800. The Wright brothers, exploits. Based on knowledge, a young man sat down. He got the knowledge of how things can fly against the law of gravity. Exploits. The refrigerator. Jacob Perkins. Exploits. Conat. X-ray. Exploits. Why did they do so? Knowledge. time is up. I think we've gotten it. In essence, let me sum it up with some benefit of pursuing knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, some of you are listening. Because of lack of knowledge, Christianity is divided. Divided over the day of worship. Divided over the mode of baptism. Divided over communion. Divided over dressing. Christianity is divided. It's us against them. The simple reason, lack of knowledge. Some individuals, a teaspoon of Bible knowledge, they will stop going to the churches they go. A teaspoon. They will stop going to the mosque they go. A teaspoon. They will stop going to the, the, the temples they go. A teaspoon of knowledge. Tomorrow. I'm going to pick a certain dimension. John chapter 13, verse 17. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Before you can be blessed, you need to do. Before you do, you need to do what? No. You can't know. And you expect to do. You don't know, you don't do, you expect to be blessed. Jesus says, if you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. In other words, ignorance is against the family's blessings. Ignorance is against a source of blessing or source of increase. A wise man is strong and a man of knowledge increases Power, 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 ha, knowledge. Knowledge will deliver you. I say it to deliver you. You see the way they cast out demons. In the name of Jesus, may you be delivered. That is what knowledge will do for you. Woo! One thing you will know about your husband 
all of a sudden, the fight is over. All his wilderness wandering, with his mouth, the, good, the godless man destroys his neighbor. But through knowledge, the righteous wife, the righteous husband, the righteous child will be delivered. Why is your marriage struggling? Knowledge. We talk too much. We don't study. We are not disciplined. We close from work. We sleep late. But we are just on social media. Foolishness. How can you sleep at 12, 11 o'clock, midnight? You close from work 5. You spend 7 hours and nothing is achieved. Some of the reason, if I were to be teaching money, some of the reason we are broke and poor. We don't know what to do with our time after 5. If you calculate 8 to 5, it's 8 hours or whatever hours. It's almost the same from 5 to midnight. Proverbs 2 verse 10. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. What to give pleasantry feeling to the family, to the children, to the wife, to the husband. What, listen, pleasant things don't happen by accident. The Bible says, for wisdom will enter your heart. As for knowledge, it will be pleasant to your own soul. The soul of the family is weak. Is, is, is hurting, is crying for lack of knowledge. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. I feel like making an altar call this evening. I have some fact. I wanted to define marriage and give some framework for marriage. I think I can take five minutes. Pastor, Pastor Peter, please pardon me for five minutes. Look at the following text and see if your definition of marriage. Ladies and gentlemen, we are, we, we are not getting it right. You see, it is a known fact that marriage is God's invention and it is God's intention. See the word I've used, invention and intention. God instituted marriage. It is clear. But watch, listen. It was God who said in chapter 2 verse 18, let's make man in our image. Then in Matthew chapter 19 verse 6, it says, what I put together, let no one put asunder. See the way Max Lucado put it. God created marriage. No government subcommittee envisioned it. No social organization developed it. Marriage was conceived and born in the mind of God. Question, don't be ashamed to tell your workmate I live my family life according to the Bible. Don't be embarrassed. It's not old-fashioned. It is the wisest thing to do. Marriage, listen, it, it is the best. God invented it. God initiated it as well. Don't be embarrassed that I don't cheat. And the reason is, I am married. Watch me. Malachi chapter 2. This is the most craziest test. Every man, screenshot this and keep it for the rest of your life. This thing, the way it has saved my life. It has saved my life. You ask, why is it? Why? Why is God not blessing me? And this was what the men in Israel were asking. And God says, it's because the Lord is the witness between you and the wife of your youth. You have been unfaithful to her. Though she's your partner, the wife of your marriage covenant. The men here hear me. You will work. You will not succeed. Because of this text. Why are the men working and it is not working. The cheating is too much. You can work hard. The promotion is not coming. The profit is not coming. God says, ah, you are asking me the reason why you are not being blessed? 
The reason is, I was there when you married your wife. I was a witness. But you know what? Your life, you have been very treacherous. You have been very unfaithful to the wife of your youth. The reason is this, I will not bless you. Period. No amount of prayer meeting deliverance. You need the knowledge. If you don't know this text, you, you pray and pray. You won't get it. In other words, based on this text, I can comfortably say, marriage is a covenant. Don't play with it. If hey, Don't play with it. Marriage is, don't play with it. It's like a relationship between God and the, and the human. Don't play with it. God said it's a covenant. When you stand before church or the traditional setting and you declare, I am marrying, you are saying, all other things are gone. This is the one I've chosen. Nobody chose her for you. Nobody chose her for me. Nobody chose him for you. It was your choice. Marriage is not a play. It's a covenant. These days, it's like it's normal. You can have a wife, but you can have a side chick. And we know this man's side chick is this girl. This one's side chick is that girl. It's not normal. It is called S I N C. God says, You will work. I will not bless you. The way you treat your wife, I will not bless you. The foundation of marriage, Genesis 2, verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. This is deep. The word used cleave the back. It means permanently glued. It's not temporal thing. Permanently glued. Marriage is intimate and it is permanent. Marriage. Matthew 19 verse 6. What therefore God has joined together. Let not man put asunder. Who joined couples together? According to the text. Who joined couples together? Oh talk to me. Who joined couples together? No, it's the pastor. Who joined couples together? No, it's the elder. Who joined couples together? Sometimes, pastors, we need to take a slack. God is the active participant. It's not what you think. He says what God has joined together. And the question the marriage couple need to ask is that, is it God who has joined us together? Ellen White said, many are mated, but they are not matched. You are, you are joined together by yourselves. Ignorance is dangerous. Ladies and gentlemen, marriage is lifelong. What God has joined together, let no man, no court, no supreme court, no high court, no church committee, no family, they are married. If they don't fulfill the basis for divorce, don't be part of the divorce. Walk out. It's their choice. Anybody participating in the annulment of any marriage that doesn't fit the Bible's requirement for divorce, the person will incur the wrath of the one who instigated, initiated, invented marriage and joined it together. How dare us? We have taken the place of God. And everybody in this country is just walking around. I repeat, it is unacceptable to sit on a committee and dissolve marriages or take it to court and say, no, God says, what I have joined together, let no man. No man means no man. No man means no father. No man means no father-in-law. No man means no pastor. No man means no, no GC president. No man. I thought I would hear an amen. If you like, come and beat me. He, he, hear me. Uh, I've taken your time tonight, but hear me. What God therefore joined together. Marriage is a union. It's a joining together. If you want me to define marriage, as I close with it, it's a monogamous covenant, intimately anchored between a man and a woman according to God's ideal in, it's supposed to be in a loving companionship. Based on the five texts we've just read. If I have time, I will have taken you to the 
what, what, what I call the rules of engagement on marriage. The fact is that we... I stay up late in the night and I'll be on the phone and a 27 year old girl married for just two years is crying to death and do you know her problem? She lacked knowledge. The counseling has become a rubber stamp. We have concluded nobody wants to learn. Nobody wants to know. This evening, in the name of Jesus, if ever somebody wants to get married, somebody wants to form relationship, somebody wants to raise their children, somebody wants to handle a husband well, somebody wants to handle a wife well, somebody wants to happen in-laws well, somebody wants to happen my family, my husband, my wife's relation well, somebody wants to have a girlfriend, somebody wants to have a boyfriend. It's not based on emotion. It must be based on what? Knowledge. Come and kneel here. I want to pray for you, for this grace. If you don't need it, stay. You need a grace. I want knowledge to be the basis of my relational life. No music, nothing. Walk and come and kneel down. Pastor Peter is going to pray for us. Walk and kneel down here. I need knowledge as the basis for my relationship. I am 80 years, but based on God's word, I need knowledge. Kneel down right here. All those joining online, anybody who is in search of knowledge, you are sure you don't have it. I need knowledge, and I want God to grant me that knowledge. Please, just type knowledge. Those in the room, come here. I need knowledge. I am ignorant. Pastor, I am ignorant. I am ignorant. I am ignorant. I am ignorant. Ah! I am ignorant. No, no. I am ignorant. I need knowledge. Come. Can you play yesterday's song for me? Quietly. Yesterday's song. I am ignorant. As you are standing here, please just hold somebody close by you the hand. I am ignorant. Pastor Peter, please pray. For, I am ignorant. Please pray for me. Those joining online, we want you to join us and we want to do this prayer. Before the man of God prays, you can just be typing, I'm ignorant. Lord, I'm ignorant. If you need any counseling, you need someone to talk to. The numbers on the screen, you can contact them. All heads bow, all eyes closed. Pastor Peter is going to pray for us. Check the chat. Oh, gracious Father in heaven. We thank you for speaking to us this evening. Each one of us individually. And we confess that we are all victims of these seeking ones. There is a, a lot of pain in our marriages and in our families because of this ignorance. We fight each other as though we were the enemies just because of ignorance. We shame one another 
because of ignorance. We even parade each other in courts because of ignorance. We subject our children to untold pain and frustrations and emotional breakdown just because of our ignorance. Every prayer meeting, we drop those prayer concerns, the prayer boxes, in ignorance. Nothing is changing because we are not willing to change. We have accepted to live in that ignorance. We have tolerated that ignorance. Ignorance has become our lifestyle. And unless we shall seek for knowledge, we will still continue in pain and witnessing marriages breaking and those are not breaking, living in great pain. But we thank you because, Lord, you came this evening to speak to us personally that we may reflect in our family life at a personal level and see how much we have been affected by this disease called ignorance. Lord, I pray tonight deliver us from this ignorance. Save us, my Father. Save us by subjecting us to intentional pursuit for knowledge that we shall know how to live with one another. This generation has become so impatient. We are running to courts. We are running to barazas. We are so quick in speaking evil and the weaknesses of our spouses to people, thinking they have solution for our problems. Yet yeah, nothing changes. The only thing we do is to tell people a story of our failures. Lord, this evening we cry to you that you may come and deliver us from this ignorance. No wonder you said my people are perishing for lack of knowledge. And many, yes, Lord, within the family are destroyed. And many families are destroyed. Many marriages are destroyed just because of lack of knowledge. Lord, the prayer I make tonight is that you, not just that you may heal our marriages, but the Lord, you may remove this ignorance within the marriages. Remove this lack of knowledge by educating us to know when you say it is not good for man to be alone, I shall make for him a helpmate. What exactly you meant? How should we live with our spouses? Lord, help us to understand and to have knowledge that marriage is a union of two sinners who are dealing with the divine things so that we don't tear each other even in our struggles because of sinful nature. That we can forbear with one another, patiently helping one another to grow into a likeness is a journey that one takes with you. Lord, I, I pray tonight, if there is any marriage represented here or those who are watching online that is in the verge of death and destruction, we declare that this marriage shall be revived in Jesus' name. Lord, if there is any marriage that is going through untold pain, even as they walked in here or as they connected 
this man and this woman this husband and this wife do not see eye to eye. Lord, I pray that you may perform your mighty miracle to bring these people back together, that they may walk in a path of righteousness based on knowledge. And you shall bring peace and prosperity in the marriage. Lord, I pray none of the marriages of Nairobi Central Church we will break. Lord, I pray none of the marriages that were instituted before you in the holy altar, in the sanctuaries, across the globe of those people who are watching and following our program that is going to break. I pray the Lord, you will give your people patience as they learn to acquire the true knowledge that is needed to keep to seeing us together and seeing your glory. I pray for our young people who are contemplating to get into marriage. Many of them are so afraid as they hear the stories, as they see the pain within the family. Many of them are losing confidence in this divine institution, my father. But I pray you, Lord, you may give them also knowledge and understanding to know what they see is not ideal. Ideal is in the scriptures, is in your will. And as they come close to you, they shall receive the power to establish their marriages within the foundations of knowledge and understanding. So Lord, may you restore our families and our marriages, I pray. Forgive us from the sin of ignorance. May your spirit lead us into truth that we may be able to live. And so Lord, as we go back home, take away that pain, I pray. Take away that hopelessness, I pray. There is that woman who and said, I've given up on this man. I've given up on this one. There's that man who said, never again shall I be found with this woman. The Lord, speak to them the stillness of your voice. May they look at each other with the beauty of heaven and they can say, I'm here to make it work. So we cancel all those decisions and those convictions that it's not going to work, we declare tonight it is going to work in Jesus' name. Give us hope beyond the pain and the frustrations we see today. May we be patient as even we wait to testify of how you have revived our marriages and now we are happily living together as we serve you and we wait for the second coming. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.